hello everyone and welcome back to my channel first of all i thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for all the support that you've been giving me on this channel for all the new likes subscriptions everything this channel is not monetized for an ad free viewing experience and i really really appreciate all of you supporting this we are at about 1260 subscribers at this point i would highly highly appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel and honestly it's free there's nothing to lose Today's topic is going to be APUs or auxiliary power unit, specifically APU for the MD82 aircraft. The way I'm going to structure this video is first of all, we'll go over the functions, basic functions of the APU, and then I'll jump into the cockpit and give you a nice little overview of what each of the switches do on the APU panel, basically on the overhead panel. And then we'll be going through a nice little APU start sequence and I'll be explaining you some of the important nuances that you might not know about. So let's jump right into the content all right so first of all let's start with the functions of the APU or the auxiliary power unit and the first one is to provide pneumatic pressure to the air conditioning system and this is when you don't have the external air conditioning unit connected or you don't have the engines running to uh, to do that function now the second one is to obviously start the engines and this can be done both on the ground um, and also in flight if the engines go down for some reason and the third and I would say quite an important one is to provide electrical power to run the systems on board. And again, this can be done in flight as well. If the engines go down, you at least have the APU for uh, getting the minimal functionality on the aircraft, getting your avionics and instruments back um, so that you, you, you'll you still have some options to navigate around. Now we will hop into the cockpit and we'll look at the APU panel and I'll explain what each of those knobs and switches do. Alright, so before I say a word here, let me quickly give out a disclaimer. I, I'm pulling all of this information from the manual. So you can pretty much go ahead and read the manual and you know learn all of this but i just feel like i just feel like watching a video is like a lot better than just reading through the manual it's a lot more convenient some people just prefer uh, visual education compared to just reading through i personally prefer visual education and that's that's what these videos are meant for and uh, if there's any real world pilots here or people who have you know flown mda80s or are well versed in this airplane and they find that there's a mistake in what i say or what i show please make sure you comment down below so that i can include um, any corrections or anything in the pinned comment and whoever's watching this video make sure you look at the pinned comment as well so that uh, if there is anything that i might have uh, misunderstood or said incorrectly it will be there down in the pinned comments based on the uh, community feedback my final goal is for everyone to learn including me so just putting it out there so let's move on to the overhead panel now first of all let's take care of the obvious things here this one here is the egt indicator or the exhaust gas temperature indicator this is the exhaust gas temperature of the apu and uh, it's from 0 to 800 uh, degrees c right beside here you will see the percent rpm of the apu again the inner dial here is uh, one percent increments from uh, 0 to 9 and the outer dial here is 2% uh, increment each unit here and it goes from 0 to 100%. Alright, so let's start from the fire protection part. Now we will go over these three switches more in the fire protection um, episode of the series but let me quickly go over what these uh, would do. So when you turn these fire agent switches to discharge, they will basically discharge, a free on, discharge two Freon bottles into the APU compartment. And now these can only be turned to discharge as long as you have the fire count norm switch to off an agent arm. If you do not have this on off an agent arm and if you have it on norm, that will break the circuit for the Freon bottle discharge and it will finish the circuit for APU master. So if there is an APU fire, make sure that you have this switch to off an agent arm and then you press these uh, and then you turn these to discharge. Now the next one is the master switch here, very easy to understand. Off means it'll just be off and it'll kind of shut off the pneumatic air supply to the APU. Run is when the APU is just running normally, it won't do anything if the APU is off. And uh, start is a momentary position which the switch just springs back up if you, uh, if you press it and then leave it. It's a momentary position that initiates the whole starting sequence of the APU. Now, in order to start the APU, you either need to have, uh, if you have, if you have AC power on the aircraft, you need to have these, uh, any of these fuel pumps on. And if you do not have AC power, you need to have the start pump on, which is DC powered. 
So you can turn on the APU using any of these um, any of these two pumps, depending on what kind of electrical power you have on board uh, the aircraft. Make sure you also have the battery switch on before you try to turn on the APU using the start pump, by the way. Now let's look at the APU air switch. When the APU air switch is turned off, that means it will isolate the APU completely from the pneumatic system. So the APU won't be able to provide any air for uh, both the engine starting and also the uh, air conditioning system. When you turn this to on, now the APU will be able to provide the air to the air conditioning system and also for the engine start. Now, important part is what happens when you go to air conditioning colder. Physically, what happens is uh, there is a turbine in the APU, obviously. So what this position does is uh, it will close the turbine bypass that you have in the APU. When you close the turbine bypass, all of the flow starts flowing through the turbine, right? And you know that when, when the flow passes through a turbine, the temperature reduces. So at turbine out, you will have a colder flow now. So that's where this switch position is used. You can shut off the turbine bypass and you'll have a colder flow uh, going into the center duct. Okay, now let's look at the most complicated part for me, which I don't completely understand. I'll be all honest here. Um, the doors, APU doors. Now, I know that the APU doors are located right here behind uh, below the tail of the f um, below the tail of the md80 but i'm not too sure about which doors uh, which doors are what i'll tell you what i think so when it's on off uh, sorry when it's on auto it basically operates the uh, door opening and closing based on your um, based on your airspeed and i think based on your uh, uh, phase of the flight and things like that depending on how much air it needs and stuff like that but overall i feel like when you turn this to ram or non-ram and when you turn it to non-ram it kind of closes this door and then opens these two um if you cycle through if you cycle through them real quick uh, so what i feel is i feel like this one is the ram door and these two are the non-ram doors and uh their operation depends on the flight phase but again like and if if anyone knows more about um about this just you know leave it in the comment section i'll gladly just pin it but don't quote me on this one. I am not really sure what um, what I'm talking about here. Usually, I just keep this to auto. And I've seen that when the aircraft is on the ground, you will slowly see this door close, these two open, and then these two will close and this one will open. So that's the normal position that I have seen these doors go to when um, when I'm on the ground. Yep, there you go. I don't know if it has something to do with the drag um, you know when the aircraft is actually flying they might close this door and open this open this one if you want to keep the APU on or something I don't know anyways I just how much ever I have flown I have never uh, I've never had a chance to you know look at this or change this to non RAM or RAM so yeah that's that Okay, so the last switch that is left is the APU norm and econ switch. Usually it's on norm because norm provides the max amount of bleed air that you need to start the engine and stuff. But, you know, there are times when you don't need a lot of bleed air and just minimal amount of bleed air is able to keep your cabin temperatures fine. You don't want to start the engines at that point. At, at that time, you can change the switch to econ and that will kind of reduce the amount of bleed air also and it will help with your fuel consumption as well. So uh, the APU... EGTs will decrease and your fuel consumption will reduce as well. But make sure that you're not doing that when you are trying to start the engines because that will significantly reduce the amount of bleed air that you're putting out, uh, which is needed to start the engine. So that's what this switch does. And now we can, I think, pretty much um, go through the whole APU start sequence once so that everyone is aware um, on, you know, how to start the APU. Now right now we just have the battery on we do not have any external power connected or we do not have the engines running either all i've done is literally just turn on the batteries and lock them um, in the position so now uh, let me verify all of these switches the fire agents are on off this fire continuous switch is a norm uh, let's turn this to off oh i had my simulator paused my bad <laughs> let's turn this to off um, door switches are on auto so it'll do whatever it's supposed to do with that and the only thing that we need to do now is turn the start pump on and uh, 
you know why we turn the start i just explained that right uh, you have to have the start pump on if you do not have if you cannot turn any of these pumps on which is uh, which is uh, ac powered pumps we do not have any ac power on the aircraft right now so we will use this dc powered pump to turn the apu on now you turn the master switch to run and then you hold it in the start position for a while until you see the exhaust gas temperatures uh, rising and the rpm rising i usually look for the exhaust gas temperatures to reach about uh, between 0 and 1 here and then i leave the switch so this will initiate the whole um, apu start sequence there you go now i can leave the switch and you will see that the apu oil pressure low Annunciator light comes on and the APU starter also comes on. This means that the APU is starting up. You'll see that when the APU is fully ramped up, fully started up, yep, there you go. You'll see that the APU oil pressure light has gone out now uh, once it reaches its full capacity. Let's also demonstrate this norm in Econ once we have the APU stabilized. One more thing about the APU is that it takes about 60 seconds to warm up or uh, you can call it like yeah you can call it a warm-up time before 60 seconds you won't have the APU air available for um, either air conditioning or for starting the engines you see that now the APU starter enunciated light here has also gone out so that means the APU start sequence is fully complete now let me quickly switch to our overhead panel view so that we have a better view of everything and yeah, that 60 second warm up time is regardless of what your APU air position is at. So even if you have it on on, it will still take about 60 seconds or so to um, for the APU to warm up and actually be able to provide air to the pneumatic system. One more thing you'll see is that the APU gen off enunciator light come on here. Because we do have the APU on, but we do not, the aircraft is still not powered with the APU because the APU generators are not on. We do have the APU gen switch to normal bit, but, but we, we have not switched our power source to APU. We have both external power and APU available. So once we go ahead and switch it to APU, you'll see that the APU gen light has gone off now, which makes perfect sense. Now, what I also wanted to demonstrate here is the norm and econ thing, right? Um, so let me see. So our EGT right now, we'll look at the EGT to uh, demonstrate this. So our EGT right now is about, what is it, 4, 475C I would say. Yeah. So let's see what happens when we change this switch to Econ. You see how the EGT is reducing a bit? Yeah, the EGT went down a little bit. Now let's cycle uh, between norm. So once you go to norm, you hit 475 again. So I think there is a 10 degree difference in uh, exhaust gas temperatures uh, with the economic APU mode. Now I don't know what the fuel consumption difference is, but you can pretty much easily check. Um, you can easily check by monitoring your current fuel levels and let it consume fuel for like, uh, let's say five minutes or so on norm and then five minutes or so on econ and that will give you what the difference in fuel consumption is. But Definitely since the EGT has gone down when you put it on Econ, it will consume less fuel as well. But you'll also have less bleed air obviously. Now we did talk about what to do when there's APU fire, but we haven't talked about how to detect, where, how to know whether, whether there's an APU fire or not. So we'll be discussing all of that in the fire protection because that, that, that topic doesn't belong here. I at least told you what to do when you have a fire on the APU. Alrighty guys, so that was it for this video. Again, if I talked out of my arse or something, please, please make sure that you comment down below um, so that I can correct it and pin it. And whoever is watching this video, make sure that you look at the pinned comment if there's any correction um, that someone would have done. I keep saying this again and again because the final goal here is for everyone to learn, including me. And I do not want to pass on any wrong information uh, to anyone. Now regardless, I would still say that I'm still a sim pilot, I'm not a real world pilot, so an engineer just reading manuals, reading forums and trying to give out uh, any information to you guys that would, you know, bring a certain level of immersion to your uh, flight sim experience. So please do not treat this as a real world tutorial or a real world educational video. This is 
simply for flight simulation purposes only but to take your flight simulation to a next level maybe this this kind of information can um, help you guys and i hope you enjoyed this video if you like the videos on this channel please please make sure that you hit the like button you subscribe to the channel so that you're not missing out on any videos in future and i promise i will keep working to get you guys the best content possible Let's build the community who is asking the right questions, who is testing stuff on the aircraft and you know just learning and using these highly detailed add-on to the best of their potential. Thank you guys and I will definitely see you on the next video.